Hi, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. With us today we have Tim Hilgendorf, one of our guys in the shop. He's going to help us describe the upgrades that we're making to the rear differential of the Apache and how we're going to get it set up for sled pulling. So Tim, we've got a bunch of parts on the counter here. Why don't you start over here? Tell us what we got. we got the factory 11 half inch uh, differential here out of the Apache. I mean, it's great for, you know, the guy that wants to drive every day and pull his camper and just not really built for handling high horsepower and sled pulling. It looks like we got a, I mean, this lockup mechanism, pretty fancy, but... Uh, it's failure, t it's got a lot of failure points in it. It's got small, weak parts in it that just aren't going to handle the high horsepower and locking up all the time. And we've seen that in our customers' yeah. trucks. Uh, they shell these out and then they do. That failure will kill driveline parts throughout the system. It's like yep. they lose one axle or one, one drive tire and it just... It's, it, it You're going to be done for once this breaks. Yeah. So then we're going to upgrade to the Detroit Locker. It's made by Yukon and uh, it's just the complete unit. It's the what you're, it's what you're going to want if you're going to be sled pulling. This thing's beefy. Yeah. I mean, obviously you can see the difference in ring gear uh, thickness here. So, I mean, you're going to get more strength out of that. And the main reason for that is since you're changing gear ratios, your pinion is going to be smaller. So it moves it closer to the pinion. It moves the ring gear closer to the pinion. So we need this extra girth here. Yep. The Detroit Locker is the name in the industry. I mean, yeah. you, you hear that, you know it's not going to fail. Um, that's awesome. Okay. I, I, I know there's a little bit of stigma with Detroit Locker, though. They're a little noisier. I mean, this is for your everyday driver, and this is more for your pulling people. Okay. So we got one failure point in the differential, and then hooking the differential up to the tires is going to be our axles. And we have both of the axles here. Uh, again, what, what do we got? Talk. What we got here is we have our stock axle compared to our aftermarket 38 spline axle. I mean, obviously, you can just see the girth difference here, yeah, and uh, yeah, this sure. is a major failure point. What happens? It's whenever too much torque is applied to them, and they're just going to break. They shatter almost right at the ends, usually. And yeah, you're going to lose both tires spinning. You're only going to have one tire spinning, or if you break both of them, you're going to be dead in the water. I know a lot of guys are shy to upgrade to the 38 spline axle, not because of cost, but because the factory housing isn't designed to carry it. You have to bore out the spindle on the factory housing. You say drill bit, I say, I mean, this thing's, it looks like a freaking drill rig, yeah. is more like it. I mean, let's just talk about the reason for that. Factory axle, 134. 38 spline axle, 154. We're not going to have the issue of snapping the axle off. We're not going to have to worry about that. You're not going to have the twisting and breaking like the factory axle. Let's take this to the housing and why don't you show me what we're going to do to get these 38 spline axles in the housing. Okay, so we're at the factory rear end housing and we have the factory axle in the housing here. We have the brake assembly off. Now, this factory axle, I mean, it's got some room to move here. It's not like it's, it's, not like it's tight in here. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Tim? Yeah, the way it's held in here, without rubbing against everything, it's bolts onto the hub. There's a hub that usually sits right here. The front of the axle here is going to bolt to the hub, and it's also going to be held also by the carrier that is in the middle. Okay, so when, it, when the truck is moving and the axle is turning, it's not touching the housing at all? Nope, it's considered it's full floating axle, so it's floating in the axle too. Okay, awesome. How much do we have to drill through? You have to drill uh, starting in the front here of the spindle, Okay. just to the back side of the backing plate. It's usually what you're going to have to drill through. Um, the rest of the tube itself is a lot bigger and you have plenty of clearance. It's just okay. the end of the spindle. Yep. We actually rented this uh, bit from All Seasons Diesel and uh, it's a, definitely a bad little drill bit. <laughs> if we were going to buy that thing, we're looking at almost 500 bucks. Yeah. Yep, and you can rent it and I think we spent about 150 bucks on renting it. Nice. And it's definitely a money saver. So I mean, This is the first axle housing you've drilled. Yeah. Yeah, so you were a little nervous about that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, being getting in there straight, getting in there, and what, what, are we, what are we worried about here? Yeah, I was really worried about getting it straight and making sure everything was perfect, but uh, this bit is actually stepped. It starts out and actually gets bigger. So lining it up was pretty easy, and once you got it in there and started, it was 
pretty much held stuff pretty straight. And so just to take it slow situation. Yeah. So we got the housing out of the truck here. We're doing this on jack stands, but you could just as easily do this in the truck on leaf springs. Tim, you get your rusty but trusty drill there, um, all chocked up, and you're gonna hit it with cutting oil as you go. Yep. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get out of your way. I'm stopping every once in a while, pulling the bed out, wiping the bed off, getting all the excess metal off that we're cutting out. I'm taking cutting oil, using a lot of it, spread, putting it inside, putting it all over the bed. So centering wise, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, once it's in there as far as I am right now, pretty much the drill bit itself does its does the centering and you have to hold it a little bit and make sure everything's steady. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward and you don't have to worry about keeping everything centered. So I use a magnet sometimes and pull out the shavings on the inside. I mean, you can see how much material we're taking out in there and pull it all out so the drill bit isn't chewing everything up and making it do uh, twice as much work. All right, Tim, so you drilled through both axle tubes, so we're ready to put the big axles in. And I mean, really, we're ready to assemble the, the whole piece. Um, but first, one more thing we want to do while it's apart is weld up these seams right here where the axle tubes come into the housing, right? Yep. We're going to weld these. Um, these are, the axle tubes are actually just kind of pressed into the uh, housing itself. Okay. So it gives it a, a weak point, a twisting point, more or less. We've and actually seen like differentials where they're yeah. pointed up towards the bed of the truck. I mean, they'll, they'll twist in there pretty yes. bad. So we're going to weld that and take care of that problem before, before anything happens. Cool. And that's just scra scraping the paint off and getting the welder on and just drawing a bead all the way around it. The empty carrier is welded and painted and ready to go. First thing Tim's going to do is put the pinion in the case and tighten things up to about where he feels is right. Okay, then he's going to put the torque wrench on this nut down here and get the rolling resistance on the pinion. We're going to grab the carrier, get the new bearing races on the carrier, and gently put that in the case. Then we're going to adjust the carrier position in the case using the carrier adjusters. Okay, so a neat feature on the 11 and a half inch rear end is these carrier position adjusters, and these are threaded to set how close the uh, ring gear is to the pinion, so we can set backlash and also preload the bearings by tightening or loosening these adjusters here. We make a spanner wrench that you can put on there and tighten and loosen those. So like a Dana 80, we'd have to take this carrier out and in you know, four or five times to get the shims right. This guy here, we can just uh, adjust that carrier position nice and quick. Okay, so setting how close this ring gear is up to the pinion is a big part of setting the rear end up. And that's what we use those adjusters to, to put the carrier in the right position. We have our dial indicator set up, and we're looking for about 5,000 backlash. And you can see the needle move there from about negative one to four. So there's our 5,000 backlash. Once backlash is set, we can torque the bearing caps down. Tim gets the first axle in. Puts all the axle bolts into the hub. And torques those bolts down to spec. And then we're gonna lay down the gasket and the cast ATS diff cover for the added reinforcement. Get all the diff cover bolts tightened down, and we're in good shape. Front end together. We got the rear end done. Next thing, we're going to get this rear end underneath the frame, get some tires and wheels bolted on this thing, and get ourselves a roller. Then we'll start getting the rest of the drive line in it and then back to the body shop. I'm Nick, thanks for watching.